Hello and good evening, everyone. It is your good friend, Mr. Eric Norton. I am here with my good friend, Mr. Steve Grad, and I feel like Andy Luck is also my good friend. He's been on here a few times, so I feel like I'm getting to know you a little a little better, Andy. How are you guys doing tonight? Great, great. I think it's uh, always fun to be a part of. Uh, was it grad school? Yeah, grad school. You can't yeah, see. I like it. It when you can't see. On. You can't see the logo because Steve's big head is blocking it because there's three of us Sorry. on tonight. But just know that we're we're, we're grad school. We're here tonight with you uh, Tuesday nights doing our thing like we always do. Uh, Steve, man, you and I haven't caught up in a while. You kind of been on a whirlwind. We're everywhere. BAS is everywhere. So this is going to be kind of an open format tonight. We're going to talk about a few things, but. The first thing that we wanted to bring up was uh, the reason why Andy is here. Why don't you lay that out for us, Steve? Yeah, well, uh, honestly, last so last week um, I was off. I was going to be on, but I'm like, oh, wait, Tuesday. I'm going to be driving from Los Angeles back to Arizona. And it turns out that I was in L.A. for a signing with Pedro Pascal, who's the Mandalorian. Um, and if you guys know who he is, he plays the Mandalorian. Um, he also is in Game of Thrones, Narcos. And also, I heard him say he did all of the SUV shows at one time or another. <laughs> he SUV felt good about shows, it. really? He's like, ah. he's like, he's like, yeah, I've guest starred on all three of them, so, or whatever they are, five or whatever. So um, he got a kick out of saying that. So, but uh, last Tuesday uh, with Star Wars Autograph Universe, we did a signing with uh, the Mandalorian himself, and it it kind of fits into everything that Star Wars Autograph Universe has been doing lately. Uh, Mandalorian stuff has been really hot and heavy. Obviously, Gina Carano. Brendan Wayne, um, Latif Crowder, who's the stunt man, and it kind of just goes on and on, and and these things are going to keep going. Andy, first of all, wh what were your um, kind of feelings during the signing? We did a lot of pieces with him. Uh, it was great. He, he was upbeat. He says that we were one of the first people that he's spoken to in over a couple of weeks. Um, he's uh, going stir crazy, and it's nice to have human interaction, which was great. You know, and I think a lot of people are are hunkered down. You know, at home doing nothing, especially these actors, because there's nothing going on. Yeah, Eric. You know? Like it, it, Eric, if you get a chance to look, check out the email I sent you. Um, yeah, I'm pulling I them up now. A few photos. Yeah, and let's show people kind of uh, the cool photos of him. Um, that you know, just how his autograph looks, so people can get a look on that. And also uh, the photo op that I got to take with him. And I believe I was the only one who did this, right, Andy? Wait, which the photo op the... to show it? Was I the only one? Oh, oh, oh Eric's going to show you, it. Of you background. wearing the helmet? Uh, yeah, I put on that. So, Eric, there's the nice EFX helmets, which are really nice. And, I mean, these things look like the ones they use on the show. They're really heavy. They got a good feel to them. I don't think they have the – maybe the ones they use on the show, do they have all that stuff on the inside? I don't know. Uh, actually, you know, Brendan Wayne and Latif were saying that the EFX helmets are, are really, really nice. And, uh, you know, it's very similar to what they were using for stunt helmets uh, on the show. Okay. Yeah, you know, so and actually, great. just as we're doing this now, look who checks in, Daniel Logan, our buddy. So, uh, and Daniel Logan, if you guys don't know, played young Boba Fett um, in Attack of the Clones. So, nice to see yeah, Daniel. I who mean, sends with Paul Candy and myself. Yeah, he's a really great guy, and I believe he has a his own group, Bounty Boxes. So, if yeah, you're a big fan of uh, Daniel Logan and, like, figures and stuff like that, um, Daniel's the guy to talk to. You know, he signs autographs. He does a lot of his uh, own signings online, and... Uh, uh, he's a wonderful guy. Awesome. All right, so what do you think the, of that photo op? That's uh, it's it's uh, it's something different. I can tell you that. It's uh, <laughs> I bet you Daniel Logan likes it. I know that. But so Very nice. I, so we all at the so at the end of the signing, he did some different people at the signing, and we uh, we had a chance to take photos with him. And and like everybody lined up, and I'm like, Andy, can I just grab a helmet here? And Andy's like, Yeah, go ahead, grab one. So I grabbed one of the helmets he had signed. I put it on. And I'm like, uh, if I take off, if I put on the helmet, will you kind of pull down your mask? He's like, yeah, sure. So this is the way, yeah, as Daniel said. So uh, really cool. Man. Nice. He was just such a such a nice guy. I think that's one of literally the only glimpses of his face we saw the whole signing. Like he took a few drinks of water, but he turned his head away every time he did it. Um, every time. And, it and if you see on some of the stuff he signed, how his autograph looked, that's actually the only one I had that photo at the signing with the helmet off. And that's a funny story behind this too, Eric. It tells you like how these guys are acting, busy, doing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so Pedro was doing Wonder Woman, which is coming, supposed to come out pretty soon. Um, and he said he put on a bunch of weight and he was kind of bloated. But the day they filmed this scene where they take off his helmet, the Mandalorian is the day it was on Wonder Woman. So he took off a few days, went and filmed this. And he's like, look at my fat head. 
It, it was, I could barely, I could barely take the helmet off because my head was so big, and I was just, yeah, it was so it's big. He gained so much weight for his role in that in that Wonder Woman movie. So, it's a great story about about that part of it, you know. And uh, uh, he's a, just a, a wonderful guy to work with. And, and know, of course, you know, go ahead, Eric. go ahead. No, I, I was, I'm, I'm going to get into something a little more uh, fanboy. So go ahead, Steve. I, I'll, I'll follow but, up in just a second. But I did want to add Beckett. You know, we did Beckett witness a lot that day. So there's a lot of stuff, you know, bearing the Beckett name. And obviously, you know, about the partnership, we have a Star Wars autograph universe. We have a dual cert. Um, so, you know, people be getting that back in the mail pretty soon, the stuff they ordered. So it stuff came out great, though, because, you know, it's really nice. Um, Beckett Authentication does a lot of witness events. This was one that was kind of special. I was glad to be at it. Um, I usually don't go to them too often, but going to this one was pretty cool. You know, uh, so what I wanted to get into is, and Steve and I, you and I have talked about this a little bit. I have actually not watched this series. Is this oh. as big of a deal as, as, as everybody's making out, it out to be? Or am, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I the right one here? Because tell me, I think I'm wrong. I think I need to watch it. Andy? I think that if you love the original trilogy, you will love this. It's a wonderful story, uh, story making, a uh, storytelling. The graphics, uh, the the uh, visual effects are amazing. I think you will get caught up in the story of the Mandalorian. I think you'll love it. Okay, all right, that's fair. Yeah, enough. I think Eric, I, and I'm surprised. Yeah, Eric, I'll tell you what. It's a good story. It's got like a spaghetti Western feel to it. Um, it's not typical Star Wars. Uh, it's so different than anything you've really seen Star Wars. Yeah, there's still a few weird alien creatures and stuff like that. The first episode you watch, look for the cameo with Horatio Sands. He's in it. Um, just kind of a cool show. You know, John Favreau put some of his friends in it throughout there. Um, I think you'll like seeing it, truthfully. Just go watch it. Yeah. And Daniel Logan, who was kind of a Mandalorian himself in a movie, says the Mandalorian is dope. You yeah. are right about that. And, you know, we get a chance to talk about, you know, we're involving autographs in this. So, you know, obviously um, it's a great show, but, you know, collecting the autographs from it is pretty cool, too, because, Andy, you could go down a rabbit hole with all these different movies, you know, collecting stuff. And it, it, The Mandalorian is something that you could almost just focus on singly and enjoy doing it, where Star Wars Autograph Universe is offering literally everybody that was in The Mandalorian. So you have a chance to do it through the group there and there's the photo op i had at the premiere of the last star wars film um at the after party and he had on that was a robe he was wearing by the way it wasn't a jacket it was a robe <laughs> what, did was say robe. You, what did he say to you when, when when he saw this photo op i did, i missed this part so i was busy uh doing other stuff but what do you say to you be like oh so you're that so, guy that was in the corner staring at me the whole day so i had some photos down he's signing him and he goes oh he's like and, you know, Charlie Price was there at the signing, and Charlie goes, hey, take off your mask and show him. He goes, it's you. He's like, oh, that's you. He's like, oh, that was a fun time. I'm like, my friend wants your robe. He's like, yeah, I love that robe. <laughs> <laughs> so there you, you know, go. It's kind of a cool shot. You know what's that's great funny. about this guy is that I did not know I, – I didn't know where he was from, but he's from Orange County yeah. uh, in California. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm the only person from Orange County that doesn't know how to surf. He's grown up here, and he moved to Texas, actually, for a little bit, right? He lived in Texas in San Antonio for a good yeah, amount of time, uh, and then came back to Los Angeles to do this acting stuff, where I think he's pretty pretty successful. Very nice. And there's nice. what we were, we were talking about, so people that are going to get that. We do a co-brand with Star Wars Autograph Universe, and we do have it with a few clients and people that we have great relationships with. And um, ever since we started back at Authentication in 2016, um, Star Wars Autograph Universe has been right there the whole time, promoting it, taking in submissions. I mean, uh, to be honest, Eric, I, I used to go to the Irvine office. We used to have I, I, an Irvine office. I, they might still have one, a drop-off office, but Andy and I used to meet there all the time. It was crazy, so we've well, come a this long way. Yeah, Steve used to have this little small office that we used to do a couple hundred things, and yeah. you know he would be there all day. Um, and it's crazy how how from that time on, moving from uh, working in that small office to where you are now, it's uh, it's amazing. What four years now? Five years? Four years? Yeah, it's almost uh, four years. Yeah, and plus 
the dual brand search. So that's really something. And I think, Andy, as of today, just from the signings in the last three or four weeks, you've probably started close to a, a thousand pieces or witnessed, uh, yep. you know, uh, Star Wars Autograph Universe. Has. So that's that's we're really proud of that. So when you guys see that, you'll know it's the co-brand. Check that out. So yep. that's a awesome. cool thing. Thanks for putting that up, Eric. I appreciate no that. No problem. No problem. Hey, uh, we're 10 yeah. minutes in and I, I got to do a sponsor break just right quick. want to say thank you to Iconic Auctions for being a part of the show tonight. Uh, we really appreciate them. Go check out their latest auction. Get registered to bid at Iconic Auctions. I'm going to post the link right now in the comments section for you. And then also want to thank you, uh, say a big thank you to Vintage Vintage Breaks jumping on here, being a part of the show. In fact, Steve, I don't know if you know this, Vintage Breaks uh, and Leighton and, and the team over there, they're actually going to be a sponsor throughout the rest of the year. So uh, oh, I want great. to say, say thank you to Vintage Breaks. Uh, guys, this contest that they're running right now, I, I got to post that for you as well. It's an absolute beautiful thing that you you need to go be a part of. Make sure you ch you check the link and get entered. Uh, they are giving away some great things for you. Uh, ends up in two weeks. We'll talk about it again on a future show, but go check out that uh, link I just posted for you guys to get on on that as well. All and right, I've known, I've known, I've known, and I've known Layton for God forever. Just going back many years, and we have great conversations in the past about collecting signed non sports cards. He loves it so. You know, yeah. we got to get him on sometime and talk talk shop about that. That'd Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, maybe we can make that happen next week uh, before the head of this contest ending. All right. So back to the Star Wars uh, Autograph Universe and Be Beckett Witness. You guys have laid out a great just stable of, of signers lately. Tell me about that, Andy. How that all come together? Well, you know, uh, it's great to have partners uh, that we deal with. And, of course, we do a lot of it ourselves. Uh, what we wanted to focus on is the hit show, The Mandalorian, um, where, you know, it's great that we have gotten so many of the cast members of The Mandalorian. And this week, in our group, Star Wars Autograph Universe, we're announcing one new signer uh, every day until Friday um, from, uh, from new signings that are going to happen in the fall. So best to, to sign up for our email database, which is Star Wars Autograph Universe dot or, or sorry, or we have a new website, yeah, SWAU.com. So four letters, SWAU.com. Uh, you can sign up uh, for your uh, email blast and you'll get the most up-to-date stuff with it. Uh, but the last couple of signs we've done, we've done Pedro Pascal, we did Brendan Wayne, uh, we've done Latif Crowder, we've done uh, Gina Carano. Gina Carano. And just real uh, quick, so you don't know, so get so get this, Eric, and this is what's cool about the Mandalorian, and this is what I think you might dig, and a lot of people do. So the whole Mandalorian feel, you know, I talked about spaghetti westerns and kind of like a cowboy feel. The guy who is in the costume as well, there's a couple different guys, but Brendan Wayne um, is John Wayne's grandson, and he oh, is wow. one of the guys that's in the costume. So if you see gun slinging or gun holding, it's him. And then Latif Crowder is uh, does all the stunts. So there's a couple guys here, and both Latif and Brendan Wayne are exclusive to Star Wars Autograph Universe as well. So they're exclusive client stuff. So you know all their signings will come via Star Wars Autograph Universe. So it's just kind of a, a a nice thing. You know, people like to know the people that really get into collecting are like, oh, so there was another guy doing that scene, and that does happen sometimes. You know, um, so like this uh, for instance yeah. for this photo right here, here. it's real, real easy. So. You got Misty Rosas, which is the person that is actually sitting there, and Nick Nolte is the one that uh, did the voice. Then you got, you know, of course, Gina, who actually was writing it. Brendan Wayne, that was actually in the suit. And, of course, Pedro Pascal, that uh, was voicing him. Wow. So this is something so cool. So to complete this thing, yeah. I would say all you need is uh, Nick Nolte, and you pretty much have everybody that you need for this. It's pretty dim. Sweet. And see, you get you get the you get the people that that shows you right there, Eric. How people collect, and uh, what was the girl's name again? That was in the costume, Andy. Misty uh, Rosas. She was in Quill. Yeah. So uh, Nick Nolte voiced it. She did the the live action stuff. So that's kind of how collecting works these days, Eric. You get everybody that's on the photo. You know, the purest. The purest. Yes. How hard is Nolte to get then? <laughs> very, <laughs> very, very difficult. Uh, luckily, if you try and get him in person, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, but we are doing a private signing with him uh, right now with the COVID-19 stuff. So that's kind of uh, on break right now. But uh, I believe that we'll be getting him pretty soon. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. Fair I've enough. always wondered about Nolte. He seems kind of elusive as it is. So uh, I met him years ago. He did a movie with uh, Julia Roberts. I think it was called I Love Trouble. 
It's filmed in Chicago. And I ordered, I remember I love Nolte from 48 Hours. So I had four or five photos. And I remember where they were filming. He took them, he signed them. And I'm like, okay, cool. He did them. He did like four or five. I was the only person. I went, I ordered more and went back like a week later. He's like, I already got you. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was the last. But time. he remembers you, Nolte. right? He, he just he did. He to... did remember. Yeah, take a hike, kid. You know, he's like, yeah, you're gonna have to leave now. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, That's... whenever, whenever I see you around, I mean, it's kind of like, hey, go to get away from us. Yeah, take a hike, kid. Get out of here. He has a real. <laughs> he's got that really deep voice, you know, Eric. That really, uh, you know, he kind of scruffy, intimidating. Scruffy, scruffy. He's a scruffy guy. Yeah, yeah. So scruffy you imagine guy. he's very, very intimidating. So. You know, that's just kind of how he is. But Eric, see the show, you know, uh, the Mandalorian stuff is really exciting. And honestly, um, if you're a collector and I know so many people and obviously I love talking about autographs. It's what I do. It's what I surround myself with. Um, if you're a collector looking to get into Star Wars or whatever, this is like the great chance. I mean, this is like a show where you could really get in there and focus on it. Andy's not only done that, he did the behind the scenes guys that have worked on it. Uh, the guys who did the baby Yoda. So you can, come on, Eric, how can you not like baby Yoda? I bet it's your not, kid loves baby Yoda. It's, you know what? My son watched it. My, my 10 year old son watched the whole series without me. Thanks, Eli. I appreciate that. And he was just, he, he said, dad, this is great. I love it. And like I just haven't been able to do it, and I, I the reason is, is I'm I'm caught I'm catching up on another show right now, and I don't want to. What are you cross, catching up on? Uh, I'm catching up on the Americans. Uh, oh, I the like American show. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Yeah, uh, okay. Carrie, Carrie Russell. Uh, if you guys like Carrie Russell, that's the show for you. I, that's, hey, uh, Carrie that's Russell was much. also in Star Wars too. So there you go. <laughs> There's your connection with Star Wars. Well, there, there I didn't go. know that. That's, that's yes. there. You go. I I remember her from Honey. I blew up the kids, but. Uh, you know, that's Thanks, neither God. here nor there. That's a long time ago, right? So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm catching up on the Americans. I will make time for the Mandalorian, I promise. But uh, it's it's on the list. It's on the list. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes time. I mean, like I said, as I believe it's 10 episodes, and every single episode has like a little cliffhanger, okay. and you just want to see the next one. It's, it's that good. The storytelling, Favreau eight, and, and right? Filoni did eight, eight, I think they, I thought it was ten, but yeah, maybe, maybe eight. eight. But Filoni, uh, Dave Filoni and uh, John Favreau did a great job with storytelling, and the uh, the direction, uh, the directors, uh, the way they did everything was, was wonderful. I think you'll love it. All right, Eric. Don't forget. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Eric maybe. went to sleep on us. I think Eric lost their feed. Yeah, I think Eric lost his feed over there. Usually, <laughs> Eric loses his here. Usually, Eric loses his air conditioning. So, you know, hey, Andy. Uh, but, you know, by the way, since I'll, you know you talk about this, this oh, you're back, Eric. You coming back? We, go. we froze up. Okay, we froze up. Sorry. You know, I did. I did want. I did want to mention something about Andy, yeah, and this is I'm something back. that's pretty cool. Um, and Andy has a massive. You know, it's funny. People that know Andy doesn't know. Some people don't know he's got this massive sports tie-in. Um, and Andy, can you just tell people kind of what you really do for a real job, not the autograph stuff, which is kind of just all playtime, but the real job, which is pretty cool. I am a playboy, uh, photographer and I take photos <laughs> for a living. No, 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 no. I'm the director of operations for formula drift. We are the premier drifting, uh, series in the world. Uh, we do races all over the country, and uh, we have our first one with fans going in St. Louis at the end of this month. Uh, so, you know, I have a very busy job. I mean, I, I do all the logistics and all the organizations of the race, dealing with the city government, the, you know, the venues, the police, the security. Um, luckily, I don't have to deal with uh, much of the racing stuff that goes on there. Luckily, we have a great tech uh, a uh, competition director named Kevin Wells that does everything, but it's a it's a very busy sport, uh, and it's uh, you can see that live streamed uh, through formuladrift.com backslash live, or you, I believe we actually have a show. Or we're still on air on NBC Sports or CBS. It's one of those, but um, but it's a it's a great series to follow. And you know, I just got back from the track and. Uh, uh, saw the some of the new cars. The new Supra is debuting at the uh, the St. Louis around uh, at the end of this month in St. at uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis. Mm. Can you and Andy just to give people so Eric, have you ever seen drift racing before? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty amazing. And I mm -hmm. years ago I'd never seen it. And one day Andy goes to me, he's like, "Dude, <laughs> you're coming to the track." 
So I'm like, all right, what time I'll be there? He's like, I'll just get there at one o'clock. So I get there and it's raining out. And I'm like, well, this isn't going to happen, right? Because you can't take a car <laughs> and catapult the damn thing and then go sideways. And Andy's like, no, it's fine. He's like, get him a helmet, get in the car. And I'm like, but it's raining. Andy's like, get in the car. So I get in the car and I'm like, God, I am scared. And they just take off and they, I don't know what how they do it, but it's absolutely amazing. They're going 100 miles an hour toward a wall, sliding while it's raining. And Steve's like, Look when he turns his head, he's looking at the wall, and they're sliding yeah. around the whole wall. And he cuts back. He was like, "Oh damn!" I mean, I, I mean, he he was gone. He couldn't speak because he was so gone because it was raining. Yeah. It was really raining, and he was really worried that he was going to crash into the wall. And you know, like I said, I mean, these guys. When it's about car control, these guys are the best in the world. And the, that's why you see them. A lot of the drivers that we have do a lot of stunt driving, like Fast and Furious and, you know, uh, Ford versus Ferrari and, and all kinds of like uh, anything that has to do with uh, racing and stunt driving. That's yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you ever I, get a chance to do it, Eric, or see it in well, person, Eric, you're, in, you you're in Texas, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where? Dallas? You know, I'm right up. I'm right up the street from TCU where you went to school. Oh, so, good. I'll be at Texas Motor Speedway, and uh, there you go. There you go. What do you say, Eric? I'll be at Texas Motor Speedway, I believe, in mid mid October. You'll be my guest. What do you Sounds say, good. Uh, I will. I will definitely come out and do that. We'll do a live feed <sighs> from the car as as I poop my pants. It's going to be a great show. <laughs> I just I want the whole live show of you screaming the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you will. You're going to be, Eric, you're going to be scared out of your mind, but it's a, it honestly, it's a great time and it's really cool. Um, and I've been to the events last, I think last October, I went to one, uh, out in California. It's just always a good time. It's a great time to see it. I'm glad that stuff's coming back. Now, Andy, the thing is we talk about this thing with crowds now, baseball, no crowds, obviously basketball, hockey, all this stuff. You guys are going to have crowds where this year? We are only going to have fans in St. Louis and in Texas. Uh, California is still shut out, and say, uh, Seattle right now, as of right now, is 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 no no fans. So okay. right now we're hoping Seattle opens up. We don't know yet, but we'll know within the next two to three weeks, and then we'll go from there. But as of the first one, St. Louis will have twenty five percent of capacity. Okay. Okay. That's going to be I'm pretty do, interesting. I'm going to do this, Andy. If you if you will have me out, I'll come out and sit in a car, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll get this done. <laughs> I kind of I kind of want to see you poop in your pants because we actually, you know, that would be very awesome live that you poop in your pants. Like, oh man, I pooped in my pants, you know, because Steve had yeah, that. Eric, are you sure you can handle this? Yeah, I can. Oh, like, yeah, I the, was. If you can get a fat guy in the car, I'm all good. I'll do it, dude. I. Okay. Okay. So I think you should watch some videos before you get yourself into this. So you should watch some videos. Go uh, just put on YouTube Formula Drift uh, Texas, and then you'll see the track, and you'll be like, I don't know, man. You're going 100 100 miles an hour, going sideways, and then doing all these turns, and you know, if you have motion sickness, you're gonna throw up everywhere. It'd be so amazing if you threw up all over yourself. Let's. Make, I'll do it for, yeah, you're for, not- the lo- for the for the love of the show. I'll do it. <laughs> okay, you have to video it though, Eric, and we want to see that video. That's fine. It will BAS buy me a, a GoPro, and I'll just wear a GoPro. You know, I'll bring one. Don't um, worry about it. I'll put you. I'll give you the chest one, yeah. one. So when you're throwing up, that it'll be just you, you'll see the projection of the of the GoPro. It'll be amazing. I'm, I'm I just down. want to hear him cry. I just want to hear him cry like a baby. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, don't worry. Some... I, I will be there, and I will make sure that you will be there at the event. It'll be amazing. All right, I'm down. Let's make it happen. All right, buddy. Good Let's man. make it happen. I like hearing that. Good man. Good, <laughs> anything good, 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 good. Anything else we need to like put out there so I can uh, possibly die or uh, have my wife be upset about? <laughs> well, you're going to be signing waivers anyway, so I really oh. don't care if you die or not because you can't. Wow. You can't do anything yeah, you yeah. <laughs> wow. How, <laughs> Andy, how do speaking of what you do is is graphing a big thing like with these drivers? Is is it kind of a, a well we do. Thing? We do we do do an autograph session on um, on Friday usually, um, and it's actually the time that we actually sit down all of our pro drivers for them, for somebody that has like a skateboard or card or T-shirt. You can get the all the roster of the all thirty something plus drivers from all over the world, and that's the cool thing that a lot of people love. Uh, do we see some of this stuff on eBay? Yeah, of course, you know, people sell that stuff or if they become not their favorite driver anymore, they, they don't do it, you know. And then we've luckily we've had a couple of drivers actually make it to the Goodwin Champion upper deck uh, sure. upper yeah. deck 
uh, yeah. cards. And then I believe Tops made something too with Tanner Faust, one of our champions of one year. And Von Gittin Jr. was on the Goodwin champions. So the reason I ask this, and it's not the same thing, I, I get that, but Tops just announced a uh, 2020 Tops Formula One Dynasty. Uh, and so they're, this Formula Formula One is getting a whole new Tops set. This hasn't really? happened in a long time. Uh, and it looks amazing. It's set to release December 16th. But uh, I was just wondering what the following was for, for like, is there any crossover for these drivers that might well, we might see in the set? The crossover is if you guys own Forza, uh, the new Forza, uh, you can download all our drift cars uh, on Forza. That's a crossover for for us to the you know average fan that that is all into drifting stuff. If you play video games, you play Forza, you can download Formula Drift drift cars, uh, such as uh, I believe Matt Fields, uh, S13, our Corvette, or and there's Von Gittin Jr.'s uh, Ford Mustang. So our, our um, series has many different types of cars from BMWs to even a Ferrari to, you know, your, your Nissan 240s to uh, the new Supra that we were talking about. Okay. All right. That's cool. Something worth checking out. Uh, Joel wants me to ask you about used tire collectors. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, these guys go through 10 to 20 tires and People love taking the used tires to get signed, and I don't know what they do with them, but they get them signed, and they take off with all these tires, and they're holding all these tires, and they're running back to their cars with all these huge tires. We're talking about 18-inch tires are pretty big, and you know, um, by the end of the night, there's only there's not that many left. I mean, there, but there's plenty of people that collect used tires. That's yeah. Crazy. Where do you put all that? I mean, I I. I it's like most collectors can't figure out where to put anything in their collections. And then I've seen tires, but you know what, back, back in the day, you know, I've seen Petty signed ones and Earnhardt senior. Um, they don't seem to be that popular anymore. I mean, uh, somebody mentioned, Oh, no, they're still as popular the as ever. You, uh, know? you get a lot of people that, yeah, the hoods, people do the hoods a lot. And actually um, for years, I've seen people uh, take pieces of hood and just cut them down and have signatures on those too so it's pretty diverse in terms of the collecting and andy obviously i've seen some of the stuff i've sorted some of the stuff from uh formula drift guys that you've gotten through the years so um there's you know plenty of collectors out there you know eric if someone could sign autographs and they're collectible people are going to be on it you know yeah absolutely so can we switch gears here and talk about some auction stuff see what i did there we're yeah. gonna switch gears is that cool, Andy? You want to hang out for you want to hang out for sure. auction sure. stuff? I love auction. I love auction stuff because I've been buying a lot of cards on eBay lately, and I was like, I'm gonna get them slapped and stuff like that because the card market is going through the roof. And well, yeah, be, you know, and it's I, great. but before and, and it's true. Before we talk about the card market, though, and I don't know if you guys saw this. So last night, um, and this broke about maybe I'd say somewhere in like the eight o'clock Eastern time range. Um, Heritage Sports puts up. Um, Isaiah Thomas trophy from the 1984 All-Star game. And um, a few hours later, um, Isaiah Thomas tweets, this trophy was stolen from St. Joseph's High School the night Mr. Uh, Pignator, my coach, died. It belongs to me. You stole my trophy. Please return it. Well, the great thing is his heritage has pulled it from the auction. Uh, is Andy still there? Did he go? He yeah, Andy left. I don't, I don't know where Andy went to. But where did he go? Maybe he okay, but, uh, but the is. great thing <laughs> is, is – um, Okay. So, Sorry. um, I had a chance, I reached out to, to, uh, one of the vice presidents I know over there and said, Hey, I think this is brewing uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, who works in the white Sox organization, uh, went to St. Joe's very distraught last night, kept texting me about it saying, Hey, can you help out? Please do anything. Uh, we kind of put the word out, you know, heritage did the right thing. Obviously heritage yanked it, you know, immediately, you know, in the morning once they saw what was going on. So it turns out the trophy was stolen from the school it'd probably get back in the hands of Isaiah Thomas and maybe back to the school at some point. This is a, a high school he went to in Chicago. So um, obviously that was kind of a big story in the auction business, just kind of in the last 24 hours or so. It was covered by a lot of people. So Isaiah Thomas was pretty fired up because um, his trophy was missing for the last year and here it is, pops up in auction. Um, but obviously Heritage doing the right thing and, and they would anyway, you know, they're a very reputable auction house. So that was great news to see that. Um, but we did, and, and Andy, you did mention this, the card market. And Eric, um, do you have any boxes of 86 player basketball sitting around in the back there that we could open? Uh, no, but I know, no. Where you're, <laughs> I know where you're going with this. That 
is an unbelievable number. I'm, and I, sh- yeah. I shouldn't say unbelievable, given the LeBron that sold the week prior. It's it's nuts. Uh, how, how many how many Michael Jordan rookies can you pull out of that? Uh, uh, was it, it was a case or is it yeah, box? It was a case. He's going to get anywhere. I would case. think anywhere between forty and fifty, somewhere in between that number. So you uh, got fifty Michael Jordans. Yeah. If they are B, BSG nine point fives, yeah. That's, how much is one worth? How much does uh, one go for these days? One nine. Uh, uh, a Michael Jordan rookie nine point five. That market is always changing and it all is always going up. Darren Ravel tweets about this stuff all the time. Uh, I mean, you you would guess. Let me, you know what? You guys talk amongst yourself, and I'm going to find an answer for you. Uh, I mean, I but say, say that card goes Eric for two grand, more than that, right? I don't know how much something yeah. like that would go for, right? So that's already a hundred grand. I went for one point, one point what seven, one point eight million. Yeah, one point yeah. eight. So, so the thing here is, you have to think about this though. Not every card. What if you take those and open them, right? And you right. start breaking those. Not every card is going to be met. That's correct. Um, you're going to have you're going to have centering issues. Uh, you might have a wax issue. Um, it could be all kinds of problems with that. So, I mean, I know you're taking a chance. I know the guy who bought, you know, they had an empty box with all the, they had an empty case with all the boxes and packs in it. You guys know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He paid, he paid like $8,000 for that. Yeah. You tell me so, that's not crazy. And I, I think the market is just going to um, some kind of stratosphere that I don't understand lately. And Eric, maybe you do. Andy, you're kind of getting into it a lot lately. I know with Mike Trout and stuff like that, but Eric, the, the market is just, it's, yeah. it's blatant. It's nuts. So uh, to answer the question, the last two uh, Jordan 9.5s that sold August 5th mm-hmm. and August 4th, Twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars, respectively. Just so say, just say twenty-five, twenty-five thousand, right? Yeah. <laughs> times, times fifty in a box. That's one point two million. Mm-hmm. Not graded nine point fives. Yeah. What are your chances of a nine point five? Cool to break those open. Oh my and God! Then, Eric then would have got- a heart attack. <laughs> Then you got to look at the rest of the rookie class that's in there, and you, the second name that I would go to is Akeem Olajuwon, but it's yeah, it's Barclay. a it's, it's a who's who, right? And then Barkley Malone, it's a who's who, and like yeah, but how much are those worth? Nine point fives, not it, not it, nothing like Jordan, not, yeah, not thirty thousand like, dollars. That's right. The, they're not like Jordan, but they're you know a couple grand a piece, maybe you know maybe three to five a grand a piece if they're if they're nine five. So. It's still a great deal. And then you got to think about the Jordan stickers as well. The Jordan stickers that are in there, they're not, they don't sell like the Jordan rookie, but they still sell very well. Well, just in the same sale too, if you look, and I, I did send you a link on that one, uh, the Jordan sticker, they had a signed Jordan sticker, uh, mm-hmm. was, I believe the autograph was graded at 10 by Beckett. Um, that sold for $20,000 signed. So th- that's like a new record for that. So I'm, I'm seeing stuff and, you know, obviously oh you see these trends in these auctions, how stuff goes. I know, and here's what I think, Eric. Yeah, and this is a it's a, a long time ago story. I want to say it was about '88, and back then the Bulls flew commercial, and um, I was at O'Hare waiting for you know. And the crazy thing is, you could find their flights; it was easy to find them. And I think the Bulls were flying out. There we go, right there. That's 20k. Well, this card, and I had his rookie, and I had a little four sheet book with me where I could put four cards and I had his rookie on there and I had that card. Jordan goes, uh, you don't want me to sign that one. That's my rookie. I'll just sign that one. So he signed the sticker. I remember, and I got it signed by him. The The thing is, is we used to go is, and you know, I, I've relayed a lot of Jordan stories through the years, but we used to be able to go to the airport. Uh, I didn't go much because we could go to the practice facility anytime, literally. And I, I didn't mention this before they, they practice at a place called the multiplex in Deerfield, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Um, literally like if you were pulling up to go to your gym, that was the same thing. They would just pull up and walk inside. There was no security. There was no sign in, nothing. They just walked in and went to practice every day. So um, we were able to get Jordan all the time. I see this card selling for $20,000, which is just crazy. And then uh, Brent Fuller asked a question down here. And if we were able to highlight that, I see it. Does the value of the same uh, of an autograph trading card on the back of the card? So I think basically you're asking, is the value the same? And I think quite truthfully, the best place to get the card signed is on the front. You don't yeah. want to get them signed on the back. And, but then there's a whole argument against that too, Eric. And, you know, I've seen that before where you're degrading, you know, Michael Jordan, even in 88 said, no, you don't, you don't want me to sign my rookie. He said it then. So, you know, a lot of players didn't sign their rookies. And now uh, what I've seen over the last five, six years is a glut of fake 
uh, Jordan signed rookies with fake upper deck stickers on them. And, you know, I've probably seen, I don't know, so over the last five, six years, probably 150, 200 of those that are just bad. So they're out in the marketplace. Um, this is a neat card, though, and I always love this card. I, You know, I love the other one, too, Eric, the, uh, the, the slam dunk on the rookie. But mm-hmm. that, that that that's a great card. Man. I love it. $20,000, though. That's a great price. And it's hard to believe when you start looking back. And, and if you're able to pull up, there was two others that sold in the sale. Um these were submitted by somebody I know he collected back when I did back in the day. And um, the crazy thing about Michael Jordan is like the 90 hoops. I think these were 90 hoops or 91 hoops. Um, mm-hmm. Or what was the first year of hoops? 89 was maybe 89. Hoops? 89, 89, 90 was the first year. Yeah. So then, this is 90, 91 is the silver and gold. Um, right. And Give me one second, just I'll look at the prices you. realized. Yeah. And, you, and I know it takes a second, but look, Andy, look at what this stuff goes for. And, um, when we picked this right up, now, I think it was $3,700, $3,700, I believe, for that card. Uh, that's the sticker, or that's the all-star. And what was that, yeah. 22? That was 27, uh, 2300, card. yeah. 27. Yeah. I mean, that was also that graded a, a nine, too. It was graded a nine? Yeah, that was yeah. a nine. Wow. Yeah. How, and then here's how the, crazy uh, is that? Yeah, that's that's nuts. Let me let me, one more to show you guys here as we're talking about crazy Jordan prices. Nothing new, uh, as we, this has been happening for a while. And then uh, the Last Dance came out, and we're all kind of going crazy here, uh, watching the market explode. But to see, well, I think what you're getting at, Stephen. Correct me if I'm wrong. These kind, this kind of low end, low end brand of card, it's still pulling thousands of dollars. Is, is really cool. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and it's unlike. I'll be quite truthful. I haven't seen anything like this. I asked Scott Malin from Mill Creek. I said, Scott, I asked him the other day. I said, look at these two cards, and we're going to have this one up. Look at that. That is insane. Mm-hmm. That is just something else. So I said, Scott, let me ask you a question. What do you think that card was worth a year ago, even if it was a ten? Scott said maybe twelve hundred. Um, an uncertified something like that probably sold for like six hundred. And maybe even no grade would sell for seven, eight hundred. That tells you what's going on right now. It is just something else. Yeah. And I, I haven't really seen anything like this, you know, like a, a so run here's, on here's stuff. A question we're looking you, at the Steve. cards. We're, here's yeah. a question for you. Yeah. So when Jordan passes, it, how is the market going to react? Is it going to be crazier than the last dance? Or is it going to be just a slight? uptick because his autograph Michael Jordan autograph jerseys were 1500 bucks and now that you can't find them for less than I think you buy them on the upper deck website for eight grand yeah that's insane I I think I I mean I don't want to talk about it but I mean if it does come down to that Jordan passes away and obviously people stockpiled I still think his stuff is going to go up and go crazy I really do he's a transcendent athlete he's someone that is a type, you know, he's a guy that just comes along every once in a while, Mickey Mantle type, icon like, and uh, you know, somebody comment just right now in our comments, Nate Diggity, uh, like Michael Jackson's, you know, record sales, and even I always go back to that in 2009 when Michael Jackson passed away, his autograph went, it was already decent, but it just went insane, you know, and albums were selling for three thousand dollars and four thousand dollars, and it's just uh, really crazy. I think the same thing would happen with Jordan, and for those of you that have them that are able to um, actually hold on to those through the years, I think you should. Because I, I just can't see his stuff going down, Eric. I really can't. Unless, you know, we're talking about something that's foolish or something you overspend on. And, you know, Andy, you, you need a Michael. Don't you have a Michael Jordan autograph or no? I do, but my wife doesn't know about my Michael Jordan jersey. Oh, yeah. All right, good. <laughs> She's yelling at me right now, but oh, wow. I'm just joking. Know. She knows now. <laughs> Grad school. Causing you divorces nice since 2020. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, exactly. you know, so 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 here's a question I, I think, for you. I think I, if it, sorry, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 my, my, my little mouse is spinning right now. So if you're the guy that bought that case, mm-hmm. do you open it or do you keep it sealed? So this is the big question that we've we've had in the hobby the last well since since last Thursday when when the thing sold. I think. I think it's kind of split down the middle 50-50 on what guys are, are willing to do. Me, I take the chance and I open it because because oh. I, I can't I can't if that was sitting there, I could not just 
let it sit there. You're but one of those it, people who be like, I'm just going to open one pack, one box, yeah. just one box. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm going to tell you something. I, look, this has nothing well, would you to do just with be, Would you just be shaking? You'd be I like would. one box, and then like 20 meter, it's all open packs everywhere. Would you like wear gloves and wear like a whole suit so you don't contaminate the, the, I, I, the, the card? I would go full Walter White opening that opening that case. But see, this is a prime example. I bought cards today. and I, I bought them packs. I was going to let them sit. In about an hour of the letting them sit, I was like, oh, screw it. I'm just going to open them. I, I, like, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. Jeez, so if I have a, if I have a case, can't. if I have a case. Uh, you have $1.8 million invested in that card. If you don't open it, it's still worth one point eight, or It could be worth two, three million down the road. I mean, but if you open yeah. it, it won't be worth 1.8 anymore. Let's be honest. If I have 1.8 million dollars right. to blow on a, on a case of cards, I'm not going to care. You're just right? going to open I'm, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I really do. I think. Um, it's I do. Want, I do. I and I do want to. Uh... <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm breaking up. I, I know we don't have the best Wi-Fi. Um, Creighton does ask Creighton Johnson. Hello, Creighton. Yeah. Uh, authentic Michael Jordan signed rookies through the years. Um, how many have I seen? And he asked if John had one as clutch. And now he refers to John. John Stanzik died in 2008. Um, John was a personal friend of mine. Um, really showed me the ropes on autograph collecting. The old school guys all know who John Stanzik is. Um, one of the real legends in autograph collecting. Um, passed away. Actually, it's the anniversary of his death. So uh, 12 years now. But um, John did not have one in his collection. A uh, good story. Long story short, but John actually got Jordan the day he came to Chicago, the day he got out of the limo, the day he came in at the airport, he got him on a bunch of magazine pages and covers. So I think Jordan signed like 25 for him that day, but he never wow. got a card signed of him at least then. Yeah. But, and, and you know, I do know some guys that did get the rookie sign occasionally, but even back then, like I said, you know, in 88, Jordan didn't want to sign that card. He just was weird about it. I, obviously, I've seen him sign since then, and I believe SCP Auctions out of Dana Point, I want to say that they're going to have a Beckett holder graded one for their next auction, uh, signed in 86. And that goes with, and Eric, if you remember, they had the star rookie last time uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, in yeah. a Beckett holder. It's sold for 40000 or something. So they've got an 86 Flair now signed, and I believe it's a high-grade autograph. And I've seen some high grade auto ones. I think in the last uh, two or three months here, we've we've authenticated two or three vintage period ones. So um, it's always interesting to see that stuff. I love it when it comes in. Hey, Eric, can we start a GoFundMe? Sure. For what? And and, and try to get you a, a box of uh, <laughs> of the of the card set, and then just to see if you are going to open it and see how long it takes you to open it. Absolutely. You start it. Hey, you start it. Put it out to your Star Wars autograph universe, guys, and see if they'll help me. I was going to start, start a GoFundMe for a block of blue cheese because I love blue cheese. <laughs> but uh, Jordan card, Jordan Rookies is cool with me. Guys, uh, I see a question here. Uh, Brent Fuller wants to know if you can look at his Jordan Auto. What I'm going to do, Brent, is give you the website for you to go use Signature Review and – Somebody will look at your Jordan for you. Uh, it'll cost you ten bucks, but it's well, it's well worth it. Uh, go check out uh, the signature review program over there. Um, so, yeah, let's start a GoFundMe. Let's get let's get Eric a box of eighty six, eighty seven Fleer. How much is a how box? How, how much does a box go for? You think? Oh uh, well, now there's what fifty is there, grand, sixty. Well, more than that. No, keep well, last, going. Keep going. Yeah, 100, keep 100, going. 50, 160, at least. Yeah, that's not bad, Eric. We could do that. We can go. I think we'd have a GoFundMe going on for like thirty years, though. I, you know what? If in thirty years we can open a open a box of eighty six, eighty seven Fleer, then let's do it. Oh, oh man, I, I, I can't I imagine like your that. face. I, I, I'm just trying to picture your face about how happy you would be in your whole suit opening up a box <laughs> of that. I mean, just to see the joy in your face would be worth any amount of money. It'd be so awesome to, you know, it's for like Steve and I, when we got to meet Harrison Ford, it's like, oh, that's fucking on solo, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> and you're kind of like, but you is like, Oh my God, yeah. that's, a, that's a box of flair. Yes. You know, yes. That's uh, awesome. so hey, you go, I remember, I, I, and I, 
And I do remember this. I remember opening a box of those. So I remember mm -hmm. it in 86, opening the box. I remember opening 87s. I remember doing all that stuff. And I wish I could go back in time. But you know what? I wish I kept all my Jordan autographs. I still have a handful from the 80s that I got. Um, obviously, we've shown some here. So, And also... Uh, some more highlight stuff and some stuff that Beckett's had a chance to put their name behind recently. And one of the things we talked about, Eric, was the pair of shoes, the Jordan mm -hmm. rookie shoes uh, that are currently in Golden's auction, um, which ends August 22nd. So if you get a chance, head over to goldenauctions.com, check out their current auction. Um, two pieces in particular that I really like in that auction a lot is they have a Jordan game used jersey signed, you know, Jordan. <laughs> And a pair of shoes. So rookie shoes, which I know the source, I know right where they came from. And, and, you know, Eric will be able to pull those stuff up for you in a second, but really neat stuff, Andy. Um, and there's the shoes, Andy. And I told you about those. I had a chance to authenticate those shoes uh, back in May. In its current bid is $140,000. And pre-auction estimate on those should be could be six seven hundred thousand dollars. So the last wow. pair that sold in May, I believe, sold for five sixty. So, um, you know, those shoes are there. And you know what's neat, Eric? If you go stay on that right on the, you see the black there. And I know it's just a smaller screen, but that's the dating they used. And Jordan had, you know, one size twelve and a half, one size thirteen. So for his feet. So here's a um, question for you guys. Okay, so since Eric's the card guy and you're the autograph guy. Why is a game used Jordan jersey that Michael Jordan actually wore that was official cost less than a Michael Jordan signed card, rookie card? <laughs> because I'm looking at this Mike Trout, $1.4 million. You could pretty much buy, with that $1.4 million, you could buy all the game used Michael Jordan stuff that he actually wore and sweat on compared to a, something that slabbed. And signed by Mike Trout, that is only five. Well, That's actually a good point. You could buy probably th this game pair. Let's say this shoes goes for seven hundred thousand or eight hundred. The other pair went for five sixty. You'd still be able. You'd still have the Trout. You know, I mean, that's crazy to think about, isn't it? I mean, you could buy a game used Mike Trout jersey, uh, the jersey that he sweat in, and he could tell you what game it's from for twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> and you're telling me that his rookie card is one point. Four million dollars. That's without the fees at the end. So that's probably like more like one eight now, right? Is that about what it is? With I don't know. They charge what twenty five percent. Yeah, the buyer premium is twenty percent, I think. So it's something like and that. A, yeah, it's a yeah. Card, and there's the jersey as we see it. And I mean, you could you could you're probably and that's crazy. You could buy the jersey and the shoes in this auction. And probably mm. still spend more on a LeBron card. So that just, it's really kind of shows you where That's things weird. are at. And I remember years ago, memorabilia took a huge leap um, and, and kept going up in price, you know, after 2000, after the um, the Barry Helper sale. And I still think it's coming into its own, but you could still buy, spend more on just one baseball card than you could a jersey or a pair of shoes. Personally, for me, I think I'd rather have that game used jersey, you know? I mean, that's I an artifact from him. Yeah, I mean, look at this ball right now. The fifty NBA fifty greatest players ever, including Jordan Chamberlain, and it's at ten grand. And, yeah. and then, and then next to it is a Hank Aaron rookie card, mint uh, number nine. It's going for one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. I just don't understand the um, yeah. the variance on it. It's here's one thing I crazy, understand. Right? I think I got into the wrong industry. I should have stayed with baseball cards as a kid. And gotten away from autographs. <laughs> That's I, you know amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what Andy's talking about right now. I'm gonna pull it up on the screen so uh, the the viewing audience can check it out. Uh, but this Andy makes a great point right here. This uh, this ball is ten thousand, and this Hank Aaron is one hundred and sixty thousand. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either, Andy. Wow, it's amazing. But I, I wish I got into cards more. I would be a multi I think all of us, if we did cards a lot earlier and doing, was going after these Mike Trout one, what, one of five, right? Is that what it is? Super refractor? Yeah. Chrome? Yeah. Yeah. That's what the. You know, maybe we'll get, you know, maybe we'll get, Ken, maybe we'll get Ken, Ken on in a couple of weeks here, you know, before the auction closes or after, so we could talk to Ken about all this too. I, I, I'd like to get Ken's feedback and kind of where he's at on this. And it's very interesting, Eric, if you look at it, we're seeing great examples of some fantastic game used items that are, they can't reach the price of these cards. And I mean, obviously look at Beckett grading. Um, you see that Mike Trout right there. Um, 
what what is this? Be, would, that, would that be ending up to be the most expensive card ever sold? So that is the consensus thought. Uh, right now, wow. it's that LeBron. It was that's LeBron from a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago. This card is probably going to smash what what that did. So that LeBron did it did one five, and I think it was one eight after after buyer's premium. This will. I wouldn't be surprised if this is uh it's three mil after afterwards. And that's just my my thought, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah, that like, is like, just unbelievable. Like look at this. Like auction one ninety nine, two thousand sixteen, Mike Trout game use photo match signed model bat for his career home run one hundred sixty seven, you know, of his MVP season. I mean, that's only eight thousand dollars. It's just that that's actually the bat that Mike Trout used to hit a home run and this card that he signed five of is 1.4 million maybe 2 million 3 million down the road might yeah. be 3 million I mean you're talking you're you know uh I I think the T206 on his Wagners and then 52 mantles and all the great cards in our business and then this stuff you know it's the shiny stuff that's really surpassing it and i think you know obviously you've got these young collectors you've got these investors that are really out there bidding heavily you know again uh the stuff's at goldenauctions.com so obviously check it out there's so many uh great pieces in there and we do get a chance to do a lot of authentication work for golden um and especially those two pieces we're really proud to have our name behind and and it was really neat for me at least to hold those jordan shoes they're just in such pristine condition um, they look absolutely amazing. I mean, I held them in my hand. So, um, you know, and some, oh, Tim, oh, here's Tim right there. We rely, what did he say? Reliability. More people relate with Trout. You might be right about that. So Trout's a very popular guy. Um, maybe, you know, probably, let, let's just say this much. Um, is he the, one of the greatest players ever? He might be when he retires. And by the way, if people don't know who Tim Donaldson is, Tim is a celebrity in his own right, but his autograph hasn't hit Trout levels yet, but it's getting there. I think, right, Andy? <laughs> Value wise, uh, I would think value wise, he's 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 getting up there. I don't think he's Mike Trout level, but he he'll be up there pretty soon. We've had two former Star Wars actors check in here, so Daniel Logan was the first one. Mm -hmm. Tim Donaldson was actually in the first Star Wars movie. He played uh, a Jawa. He was five years old. They went to Death Valley School and said, "Hey, we got to fit these kids in these costumes." Tim was lucky enough; he got one. Um, still remember some of it. So, you know, um, Tim's a good friend of ours of both Andy and mine, very good friend. Um, and his wife, great people. And, uh, he got a chance to be in star Wars cause he lived in death Valley at the time. So pretty cool. Very, nice. very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So, very so cool. in so, your um, opinion, so in your guys' opinion, who is the great next superstar in memorabilia and in cards? Is it Zion Williamson in NBA? Is it Mike Trout with baseball? football there isn't anybody that's a true true well mahomes mm, is pat, that right? it's pat mahomes right now <laughs> yeah and yeah. i think mahomes could be but is this card going to be two or three million someday are they going to make him like that i don't know that's hard to say um could it be zion williamson absolutely there's no doubt about it i mean but you know right now with covid it's i think it's still hard to get caught up in that i think once the nba has a full season next year um, and he's been hurt too. He's had injury issues too. So I, I think he's got to play up to that hype. You know, he's got to be still like, look how LeBron, uh, LeBron James is still so dominant. He owns the league still. I mean, he, he does everything. Um, you know, maybe in baseball, a guy like uh, Yelich or at some point, you know, guys like that um, that are coming up and uh, Luis Robert from the White Sox, maybe. Um, unfortunately, his autograph is just, you know, looks like a, a couple half moons. So it's really ugly, but yeah. Um, that's how these guys sign. So, so also here's another question that uh, because I'm reading people's comments as what which card company is pretty much the card company that have the most expensive autographs are coming out like these Mike Trout ones are what <sighs> Wh which ones are they I mean are they Bowman or they, wh wh what company is it All right. um, so yeah you're you're talking about uh, Chrome. Yeah, Ariel Martinez is uh, asking that question there, and that's a great question. Um, so there's, I, it all lies with the licenses, uh, in the in the the player licenses, and the uh, in the in the league licenses. So for baseball, Topps has those has both of those licenses, and you will see more value in a Topps Chrome, a Bowman Chrome, than you would see uh, in a, a Donruss or something like that that doesn't have that doesn't have a, uh, the, the league license. With that being said, uh, for basketball and football, 
it's all Panini all the time, and that's where you're going to find the big value there uh, for autographs and, and memorabilia because Panini has the NBA license and the NBA Players Association license, the same with the NFLPA and the NFL license. So uh, it, it really depends on the uh, sport that you're looking at. But uh, basketball has been so hot. Like, it's been crazy hot since since the end of March. And Zion and Ja and Luca and Trey – They've been driving the market, and, and and Pat Mahomes, he's been driving the market. But the last week, baseball's really, really been taking off. So it's going to be interesting to see how the next couple of weeks play out with you know the NBA playoffs starting and the the bubble the the bubble coming to an end, and and baseball you know getting into the playoffs maybe uh, with a bubble format. Let's see what happens there. But that's that's the best way to answer that question, Ariel. Wow. That's something I never knew. Yeah, that's that's good great. Stuff. Hey, I, mean, I wanted to. Stuff. You sure. need to get updated with that, Andy. Come on, man. Uh, I do want to update people um, that want to come out and see us or want to submit to us at least. Um, you know, obviously we have limited contact events, uh, but we will have a few events where you'll be able to submit. Uh, you're not going to be able to interact with me or anything, but I am getting out on the road and we do have guys out on the road this week. Um, I'll be in Springdale, Arkansas Thursday at Cleve Sports Cards. Um, and that is from 10 to 4. So I'll be out there. And then also um, we're at DC Sports in Detroit on yeah. Thursday where you can submit. So I know a lot of people keep asking because they can't drop off to our office right now. Um, we're in Arkansas. We're in Michigan. And then on Saturday I'll be in Hot Springs. Um, so if you go to our website, you can find out all that information. We've got coming up, coming dates in Carmichael, California, Staten Island, Burlingame. Uh, we'll be up in Mill Creek. Um, so we're kind of getting out there and doing some stuff as much as we can. It's very difficult. Um to get out right now. And Andy, you know this, and Andy is a big supporter of Beckett authentication. Andy himself takes in submissions all the time. Um, you know, a couple times a month that we do work on. So, cause I understand it's hard for people to get their stuff to us, or sometimes they don't feel confident sending it. But if you're out in Michigan, if you're out in Arkansas, um, you know, uh, Northern California, New York, Staten Island, we're trying to get out to those places pretty regularly. So you see us, you're able to submit, um, in person to the store and at least get your stuff done. And usually the stores are pretty good with you and offer you a discounted rate. Andy's always offering specials through star Wars autograph universe. Um, if you feel that's your best way to submit, if you got a bunch of stuff, um, it could be the route. And obviously our office is always been up and running. Um, I'm here today. I've been here. This is the third time I've been here. I come here about once a month. Um, just to come work on orders and get stuff done. And we have a full house here. There's a lot of stuff in this office. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the coolest things I brought with me is I brought an 86 flare set that's going to get slabbed. It's signed. So uh, <sighs> there will be a full 86 flare set coming up in, in Beckett. So uh, all signed, everything. I think, Eric's gonna, pay, all gonna I think Eric's going to make a visit to you. He's going to come see you real fast. So you can touch it. Just yeah. touch the card set. Just, just touch it. They yeah. get mad at there me when go. I – when I'm opening the cards for you know when we're doing box breaks and I and I touch the patch in the card, they get mad at me if I do that. But I'm gonna let really? y'all know. I'm gonna go touch all those cards. I'm just gonna look at. I was gonna gloves. smell it. You're just gonna, just smell, gonna smell it. Like, it. Yeah, well, maybe if you there. were just at Bubba's and then touching the cards, it would be bad. No, yeah. So don't go to Bubba's. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. I mean, uh, this card stuff is just so crazy. Like people complain about fifteen hundred dollar Harrison Ford autographs when, when out there there's one point four being spent on a baseball card it's just it's a pretty it's good amazing. point actually yeah i agree with yeah. you That's it, it is amazing it is 100 percent amazing andy you're getting a lot of love man they want you to come back and do this more often uh yeah you've been on the show this this come is like your third or fourth time please. right um, I had to do one by myself, I think, yeah. with you, uh, because I was covering for Steve because he went on a, 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 a spiritual uh, awakening <laughs> thing. Uh, but I was really that called enjoyed, a vacation? Yeah, I really enjoy talking about sports autographs because I, I'm uh, I, that was my first love. You know, Star Wars is my second love, uh, and I collect a variable from sports to entertainment. So I'm pretty broad on what I know about autographs. And uh, Steve has taught me a lot about the the behind the scenes stuff and what to look for. You know, it's just like when we talk about autographs, people go, "Oh, I want to collect this TV show or whatever." But if it's not a classic TV show, then it's probably not worth much. But once they get right. canceled, it's worth nothing. Right. Yeah. All right. Here's We're gonna wrap things. But yeah, we'll have Andy back on soon at some time. Yeah. Some point. Steve, they're turning off the lights on you I just, there. I, I know. I just lost my lights in the background, man. I, I think you. <laughs> if you're 
you're still at the office, so they're kicking you out of there. That's what's happening. Uh, yeah, so this I have is what I want. The the the, uh, the made for the the cleaning crew just came in a few minutes ago. So, oh, did they really? <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah. I guess that's time for us to wrap it up. Then, with that being said, I want to give a big shout out to Vintage Breaks and Iconic Auctions again. Uh, I'm going to put that link right now in the comments again for, for from Vintage Breaks for you guys to go into that contest. It ends in two weeks, and uh, go be a part of that. It's a lot of fun. We're going to get late on the show soon. Andy, I look forward to seeing you in October. I'm sure yep, we'll talk yep. before then, but yep. uh, you guys get ready for me to uh, deuce my pants because apparently that's going to happen. And uh, I guess that's not that's pretty. Or, that's not. Yeah, and not. Don't, for, don't, don't forget, come check out our travel schedule back at mm-hmm. hyphenauthentication.com. If you can't submit to the office, you want to see us in person, this is a perfect opportunity. Um, but like I said, no contact, got to submit to the store, but we'll get your work done for you. So we appreciate it. Obviously, Star Wars Autograph Universe, go support the upcoming signings and join the Facebook page if you get a chance. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Guys, if we didn't get to your question tonight, uh, we'll, we typically go back and answer questions. So uh, just look for those in the comments. Until next time, guys, good night and God bless. Later.